Hey everyone, it's Jolt here. Five weeks ago, I announced a crazy experiment to speed write a book from scratch in six weeks. I'm not a writer, I'm not good with words, but I wanted to see if my visual thinking toolkit together with AI can bridge the gap and if I'm able to speed write a meaningful book. I also committed to maintain this vlog and I recognize that for about two weeks I've been quiet, I've been neck deep in work, working on the book, as well as I committed to present my learnings, either my failure or success or somewhere in between at the PKM Summit in Utrecht, the Netherlands. And that's just less than two weeks away. That's amazing. It's so close and I'm so stressed about it. But I wanted to give you an update today. So in previous videos, I likened writing this book to climbing a mountain. And I like these videos. I also like to hike. This is speed climbing the Motternhorn, which is a 4,500 meter high mountain in Switzerland. And of course, to speed climb a mountain like the Motternhorn, you need to have good climbing experience and you need to know the area you're climbing. And you know what? I don't have that. But here are a couple of things that I'm going to share today. So first of all, I wanted to share some of my learnings about AI and especially I wanted to show you two prompting strategies that I found that worked for me. But first of all, what I found is writing with AI is definitely not the easy way out. AI only amplifies if you don't understand what you want to write about, you have to have an extremely clear idea of what you want to write. AI can generate nice words, but it does feel like Charlie Gordon after the surgery for moments, but then AI forgets and forgets the context and you just need to re-explain and re-explain and re-explain and re-correct super frustrating. It sometimes feels like this man with Alzheimer's who just forgets midway what you started. So it's a frustrating experience to write with AI. But I have two successful strategies here. So I wrote draft one and I was super happy. I was ready with it in three weeks. But then the celebration was very short-lived because I looked at the material and I saw that it was plagued with repetition. And so that's when I took a different approach and I reverse engineered atomic notes out of my initial draft. So I thought that my initial draft is good. It has good ideas, but I need to tease out the ideas from it. So it's sort of a reverse engineering of atomic notes. And so the idea I took, it's, it's something like this. If you saw the movie Prometheus, you know, this alien arrives on earth and takes some medicine after arriving. And this medicine breaks down his uh, genetic code. And so he dissolves into DNA into molecules, he falls in the water, and through this he seeds earth, and out of his molecules new life is born, and this is what Zettelkasten and Atomic Notes promise as well, that you have these atomic ideas, you read, you process, and then you can create something new. So what did I do? How did I get here from my draft? I used Google's AI Studio, uh, Gemini, and I used this because Gemini 2.0, the version that's available for testing is first of all free, and second, it can handle extremely large context windows, up to 2 million tokens. So what I did was I took all my material here and I 
created this prompt for AI Studio that you are a highly sensitive AI insight extractor and you need to find all the unique insights. And so I provided this extremely long prompt with my first draft that was plagued with repetition and it generated this JSON. I can show you the JSON in the end. So it generated this file, which then I processed into chapters. And so you can see here, I have insights and references organized per chapter, and it's a pretty long list. So you can see here on the left hand side, this is a long list of atomic ideas that I extracted out of my book. And then I took this material and I created a ChatGPT project folder and I placed four things into that folder. I created a writing instructions. I added the atomic ideas JSON, the one that I've just shown you. I added a detailed chapter outline for the entire book. So after the first draft, I had to think about the book again and create a more robust outline that was extremely strict about what's out of scope for each chapter, topics that must not be touched because that was the reason for the repetition, of course, the materials I provided. I have some strong opinions about certain topics and that polluted the entire book. So I had to make, make sure that every topic has its chapter. And I'm very clear that that topic cannot be touched in other chapters. And of course, as I progressed, I provided the draft that's already written. And then I followed the following strategy. So first of all, before I wrote each of the chapters, I asked GPT to list the key concepts per chapter from the book. So you can see here my prompt, carefully analyze book outline, insights and references, JSON, and create a list of core concepts introduced in the book. And so that resulted in this outline that per chapter I received this material about the core concepts that are covered in each chapter of the book. And when I was happy with this, note that sometimes, and this is back to Charlie Gordon's uh, moments when he's intelligent and when he's not, or back to the guy with the Alzheimer's, that sometimes this worked and I got a perfect list of concepts that was good and sometimes ChatGPT got this wrong. So I had, I used this to make sure that my context has the right understanding of the book and there's not going to be pollution between chapters. And when I was happy with this, then my next prompt was that I want to write chapter X, maybe chapter three, but before you start writing, ask me questions. So then I clarified the questions. And then I asked ChatGPT to break the chapter outline into two parts. And I did this because a 4.0 on paper can handle longer token outputs, but in reality, I found that around 1100 words, the quality of the output decreases and it, it's just really not usable. So if you have a chapter of maybe uh, 2000, 2500 words, then you need to chop or slice that chapter into two parts. So I did that. I asked GPT to cut my chapter into two parts. Now, later I found that with O1, I can generate longer chapters, but I only have a limited number of O1 runs and I'm not prepared to pay $200 for the professional subscription. And then I also found that the new Grok 3 model can also do this, but the language of Grok was not so good, which I'm not going to talk about it today in detail, but I actually used my 
GitHub Copilot subscription for Sonnet 3.7 and I used Sonnet 3.7 to improve on the language from Grok 3. So that was sort of a solution. But if we go on, my prompting strategy was the following. After I had my outline broken down into part one and part two for the chapter, I asked GPT to author part one and I worked on it until I was happy with that. So you can see here that uh, I have my uh, chapter outline here. So you can see here I have my, my uh, outline that was generated by ChatGPT. And here's the midpoint break. Part one ends here. And then I get my first prompt asking to author part one of chapter three. And then I have chapter three here. But what I did after this was I didn't continue uh, adding my prompt here to say that, okay, now write part two of chapter three, because I found that the longer the context window gets, the further away I get from the top where def we defined the concept. So you remember here at the top, we have these concepts defined. The further we get from those concepts, the fuzzier GPT becomes. So instead I did the following. I came here and I said that I'm including part one of chapter three below. Your task is to author part two. And then I just simply pasted it right here. So I pasted the one that GPT generated just now and I sent this off. So what happens here essentially is I forked the model and now I have two different strands of the same uh, prompt. You can see here that if I come here, you will see that this prompt here, I need to come down to the bottom so that you can see this prompt now has two versions. And then I, I used the second version as a second branch for the conversation because each branch will use the context that's above it. And so I essentially repeated this after this because once I had my draft for part two ready, I put part one and part two together. And instead of asking, so I'm again rewriting my prompt, instead of asking for GPT to author my chapter, I said, okay, GPT, here's my entire chapter. Now review it. Does it align with the outline? Is there repetition? Does it align with the concepts that should be in this chapter? And am I following the rules that we've set? And then I improved the draft and went through this process. I found that after roughly the second to third iteration, it started to go in circles. So I found that it's maybe two or three iterations, depending on chapter of how I went through. So again, I created the outline in two parts. I wrote part one. I went back to my prompt and reprompted it from this point to write part two, but included part one. Here I included my entire draft and asked for improvement suggestions. I improved the draft. I repeated, I repeated. And with this, I got pretty robust chapters, but it was really uphill work because here, when I was answering questions, I was already adding significant amount of detail to an already long chapter outline. And then here, this was also quite some writing tasks. So that's why I say that this process is really not the easy way out for me because I'm not so good with words. I'm not so good articulating myself in writing. Also, English is my second language. This was the only way I was able to do it. At least that's what I tell myself. But eventually where this got me was yesterday, I finally finished 
draft two of the book and I sent it off to a couple of people to review it and I'm feeling much better, much more comfortable with draft two. Will I be able to publish the book by end of this week? I doubt it and you know what? I don't even want to publish something that's not good. I think I've put lots of effort into this. This is going to be a very good book, but if it takes two or three weeks longer, I actually don't mind. There's no external pressure, but I'm going to share my learnings at the PKM Summit. So if you haven't signed up for it, and of course, if you live in Europe, make sure that you catch this opportunity. I'm going to have a link in the video description with a discount. I hope it still works. I didn't check, but a few weeks ago, the discount was still there that you can use to sign up for the conference. And yeah, I hope to see you there. And I'm going to tell you all about my learnings. And of course, I'm going to share a bit about the content of the book and share some of the reflections on how my visual thinking toolkit works for the book. So thank you for watching. I hope you found these two prompting strategies helpful. And in the comments below, let me know what you think. You've shared already so many valuable insights and tips and tricks and tools please keep them coming. It's super helpful. I read all of them and I also apply all of them. So I'm extremely open to your feedback. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have a good idea and I hope to see you at the summit and then we can shake hands and we can talk about the book, talk about PKM, talk about visuals and just have a good time. Thank you.